Okay, right. Thank you guys so much for this morning. Once again, <laughs> Monday morning expected. Hmm, messages came in as usual because the Dow have just rocketed to no time high once again. So it seems to be like every time when it's all time high level, I will have messages like this and I can really understand and empathize on your yeah, cause and concern. Uh. But nonetheless, itself, guys, I have to do my MAO by morning. So hopefully you understand that sometimes it's not that I purposely don't pick up your phone, but because I have to complete my MAO uh, writing and set up before a uh, certain timing, right? As you know, then of course, if I have, I can't reply you instantly, just bear with it, okay? I'm so sorry for that. I need to let you know first in advance. Okay, so let's start, start with today, this morning, MAO right now. Okay, let's do it. Go. Okay, for this morning, 15th of March, 2021, Monday, all right, trade with the boys members only, morning MAO, market analysis and outlook. Time to long the US bonds. Apparently, this question had been asked twice, okay, three times by uh, people. And that was, um, it come as a surprise, honestly. So what's the reason? Apparently, they are saying that now the bond price has came off dramatically and with the um, the what do you call the US Dow Jones going higher? Is it time to buy bonds? Now, I will say the answer is no. Right? And I say no, and if a definite no, a big NO, because I believe that the bond price will still continue to trade lower. Yes, indeed. So, um, what's the reason? I think that last two weeks I already covered the, my main reason. I believe that the US uh, inflationary data will keep on going higher. The CPI number will go higher and obviously itself, right? Okay, that will basically push down the bond prices lower. Okay, so bond price and the yields move inversely. Yeah? So um, when would it be a good time to buy bonds? Maybe when it's about 3% level, of course. Then maybe you can jump into it. But uh, if you really think that it's a good time to go and buy bond market, I guess you understand this. Uh, if the yield go to 3%, the bond price will be even lower, right? Uh, then you consider doing that if you really want to do that. If not, itself, just give this a miss. I know that reason why you guys are actually wanting to buy the US bonds because some expert now is calling for buying bonds and I totally disagree on that. Okay, so that is my personal view on this one here in the start of this morning. All right, because the new bond in town, they are telling you that right, it's time to buy into the bond market. All right, you know this is a very famous quote. Whenever James Bond come in and say bond, James Bond, right? So now the cartoon is saying that yeah, bond, long bond. Okay, the thing is this: if the bond market is so good to long and it's so like, I mean, sure win, right? Then why aren't the boys doing that? That's my first thing. Because how I know they're not doing that? Very clear. Right? If the yields are still going higher, right? That means the, they are not buying. That is a very safe, this is a very important thing. It's just like telling you that this stone itself is very good. It can, it can heal you all your medical problem, but then no one's buying. And you're the only, probably the only uh, unfortunate sucker going to buy. And obviously you get hit, right? So that's why I will tell you that for US bonds, try to avoid it if it's possible. Now do note the reason why I think because of this guy, David, Pat, David Tapper, he is getting very bullish on the market. He was right in the way and he believed that the rising rate are set to stabilize. And that is the reason why people are believing it. But let me ex let me just remind you about this David Tapper, okay? Now, if you don't remember this, you can Google on him. Last year, May, last year, May, uh, he last year, May, when the market was about to recover from the bottom, right? He was one of the very few people calling for the market being overvalued, uh, overvalued. Uh. And of course, the market went even higher, even higher. And now at this period of time, he's telling you it's the market is the time to buy, right? I have my question mark. Uh. So end of the day, of course, he's a billionaire. I got no way to fight with him, but do check your sources when you enter the market, all right? Do take note of that. So Jerome Power, is he really listening? That is a question here. Is he really listening? Now this cartoon, I think speaks all right. Jerome Power was being asked, what's your view on inflation? And obviously he is not even opening his eyes. He's basically shutting his ears. So this tell you very seriously that they are not really wanting to listen. And of course, uh, this coming Wednesday, we have the FOMC, um, this uh, meeting. And of course, Jerome Power will be speaking also. 
So stand by for another round of uh, roller coaster ride this week. And I say once again, uh, he, I mean, the Fed Reserve can, you know, really deny anything. But end of the day, you must understand that the people uh, are watching it very closely. All right. So the thing is this, okay, this cartoon is out, right? Everyone, everyone means the general public, they go to receive their 1004 since uh, yesterday. All right, but the stock market itself is no, I got 1004, which means that, right, what I'm trying to say is the people who was going to have 1004 from the uh, 1.9 trillion COVID bill, they're going to dump money into the stock market, undeniable, right, as we can see. So now everybody is doing that. And obviously the boys also know that. So the knives, the forks, you know, are all sharpened already. They're ready for them. So that's why I say this week is still going to be a very big roller coaster ride. Some stock will go crazy upwards. Some stock will may get into some trouble. So that's why I keep on telling you guys is this. There's always two sides of the coin when everybody thinks it's a buy. Watch out. Okay, watch out. Things the boys are actually all waiting for you. Okay, so disclaimer as usual, today we just want to make sure that you know your financial status well. As, as long as, as, mean, as much as we want to make money from the market, right? If you are not able to control your financial state, your financial uh, condition, or you are not able to do your risk assessment, you may in, get yourself into trouble. So be very careful, especially this week. I already said one more time, this week is going to be a very big roller, roller coaster ride, okay? Okay, so what we are seeing right now is that the US 10 year B, uh, treasury yields is at 1.629%. All right, it's really incredible, but if you look carefully, the US dollar also coming down at the same time at the moment, right? So the question is is the US yield going to approach the US dollar up at the moment? Well, what we're seeing now is no, because probably the $1.9 trillion bill, yield, $1.9 trillion bill that is in the market but the yield is still surging higher, right? So the time was 1.4%, then one then went down to below 1.5%, 1 1.54%, went down to 1.5%, and then within just three days, it went back to 1.62%. So this is not good, okay? And I already said this before, that if the yield goes above, above 1.6, the next level, it will scale towards is 1.7. And I strongly say this again, and if the later on with the dollar also start to climb up, right, it will cause a double whammy. It will cause a double whammy and the equity market will face some problem. Okay, so when these two combine up, go up together, right, this is where all the trouble will begin. So mark my word on this. All right, so what we are seeing right now is the 10-year treasury yields jump to the highest level in just less than a year, in more than a year, sorry, that the total job claims are still at the higher level, although it's slightly below estimate the jobless claim. But now it's because of the government fiscal policy and also the reopening of the economy that is actually stimulating the market in a way, according to what the federal belief. And because of that itself, right, you can see the yield have been going up dramatically from 1% all the way to current 1.6% in just two months' time. So obviously now everybody will be watching for FOMC decision on interest rate. Obviously, they will say no, they will not have interest rate, that's for sure. But it's more of the position they're going to give to the market. And uh, that is why now the whole whole emphasis will be on them. It's Tuesday and Wednesday. And um, do note, uh, the energy stock market, the energy stocks have went up by 20% already. Financial stock up by 10% and industry up by 7%. The one that I was I gave away is the technology sector and down by 5.4%. So now the thing is this, when the rates were low, valuation wasn't a matter. But now rates are slightly getting higher because of the look at valuation in a way, and then now they're focusing on the cyclical stock. So you look at Apple right now, right? Apple shares ever since uh, about um, early March, Apple shares has went down, uh, trading below the S&P in terms of the movement, right? So all along itself, Apple always been leading the S&P 500. But now you can see Apple is now decoupled away from the S&P. Now, of course, this is something that I want to remind everybody. The last two years, the Dow Jones have been going up from the low of 25,000 all the way to 30,000. It is because the technology counties, counters were the one basically moving it up. And now suddenly you're telling me that, right, the, the technology counters are no longer important. 
we concentrate on the cyclical at a price like this now, right? I don't buy the story. So this is whereby I'm just informing you traders, please understand this. There's always a start, there's always an end. So if the starting is the the leaders are the ones who are pushing the market and now they are not pushing it, right? In all textbook for any form of market peak, it's always that the leaders are not performing. That is where the, the so-called the followers or the one at the behind gets into trouble. That is my point here itself as a trader to inform you that be very, very careful on the NASDAQ, all right? So the calendar for this week is all right because of the FOMC. I just bring it up for you at 8.30. Now do note, now we are already no more daylight saving. So that's why this morning at 6 a.m. you see the Dow Jones already move. 5 a.m. the Forex market already started. So that's now back to one hour. Shift backward. Okay. All right. Or you can put it shift forward if you look from a different angle. But remember that's all in, in simple note. 6 a.m. the Dow Jones will start trading. No longer 7 a.m. So this is uh, 8.30 a.m. means 8.30 p.m. Singapore time, uh, 24 hours later. So we have Empire State Manufacturing at 8.30 p.m. today. Then after that, right, on Tuesday, we have the retail sales, which is pretty important. Then at 9.15 p.m. Singapore time, industrial production. But more important, it will be on Wednesday, whereby the housing starts to see any inflationary um, numbers. But at 2 a.m. Singapore time, that's where the federal statement will come out. And of course, that is Jerome Powell will be speaking at 2.30 a.m. So that is Singapore time, Thursday, 2 a.m. and 2.30 a.m. All right, that time, okay? And of course, the initial claims on the next day. So guys, that means that this week, the market will be focusing on, on what Jerome Powell and, and friends have to really decide and say. So the market will be expected to be very into a low, low coaster ride, okay? So you just have to be careful this week, okay? Now, of course, you know, guys, I've been always saying that there's one analyst that I always respect and I believe that he speaks the truth. And obviously, this guy is Tom Lee. So Tom Lee, he himself is now a Fundstrat Global Advisor. And he was previously served as a JP Morgan Chief Equity Strategist from 2007 to 2014. So now he's saying that the market will go even higher by at least another 10%. Well, or 9% to be precise. The S&P 500 now is 3930. And he's looking at the by June, the market to close at 4300. Now, obviously, if you say that, if you if you if I go to you know follow what I say, I will say trust what he says. All right. But if you ask me deep inside my heart, it's all right. I got a little bit jittery on this. You know why? Because the point is this: he's talking about the first half of the year to hit 4,300. I, I really don't know how it can be reach, be able to reach there. And I was looking through his this video. It's all right. As much as he is uh, still delivering it in a very smooth manner way, somehow or rather, it's a little bit different in the body language. And just is this my personal view. So anyway, he is saying that, and he is saying that right. The CBOE vote, uh, VIX now is a very low level. There's no need to concern. He said that he this one something about he said he keep on reminding that the ten year yield is a concerning factor, but whenever he say about this, he doesn't you know he doesn't counter check with the stock market. So all I can say is when he was talking in this interview, I feel that there's three Tom Lee talking at the same time. First, Tom Lee is telling you that his prediction, the 4003, okay, that's the first one. The second one is self, right? He's telling you, but don't worry, there's no problem in the VIX unless the VIX search up. The third one is that, right, he keep on reminding the viewers that, right, the 10 year yield is actually a very concerning note. So, all I can say is this maybe from a very from the investment point of view itself, right? He should be actually telling people that the market will go higher, but he did give warning about the VIX and also give warning on the 10 year yield. So obviously what I can interpret from here is that, right? Stay bullish at the time now, but if the VIX and the 10 year yields have to go up, then obviously it's all right. This may cause him to change his stand in the market. But again, Tom Lee is one of the most respectful, respected guy in this industry. And I one of the best in, on CNBC whenever we interview him. So I'll give him a pinch of salt. I will say that, right, stay bullish, but unless the, the VIX indicator or the 10-year yields changes, okay? So that is my stand with him on this particular case right now. Now, of course, Bitcoin has surpassed 60,000. Wow, incredible, but it's not something unexpected. When Bitcoin was at about $40,000, I was saying that Bitcoin will cross 50, you go 60, and about 62, that will be a good level for us to take profit. And incredibly, the Bitcoin really hit about that range itself. So what happened is that Bitcoin has been up for 80% just this year alone, 80% this year alone. 
and it's like up by 570% in the last 12 months. Now, 80% means uh, from January the 1st. Wow, it is incredible, right? It's incredible, right? So now the thing is the valuation has surpassed $1 trillion again for the second time, all right? So the thing is this, will Bitcoin go higher? Now we can see that MasterCard, PayPal, BNY, Melon, they're all basically going up. They are basically getting involved with Bitcoin. And of course, more and more people are getting in, okay? More and more people are getting in. So people who have been supporting us as well, right? Remember last time when I say, how many of you agree that uh, TWB family or team is really the most supportive, um, strongest in support la, in terms of uh, um, in this uh, education uh, industry. And I seek for you to write the word agree. For those who agree, we took down your name. And then of course, we tell you to give you a little bit of gift. And indeed, I did that yesterday as promised. On the 14th of March yesterday, on a Sunday night, I created a special BTC MAO for them. So basically it's all right, about uh, nearly about nearly 70 people were online. All right, in total, we have about 112 people who gave the agree uh, reply. And of course, yesterday was uh, just part one. And of course, they really like it because they share with them a lot of stuff that is really beyond what they know about Bitcoin because I don't talk about just normal Bitcoin stuff. I talk about more interesting stuff as always. There's some conspiracy, obviously. So some people, they, they really like it. And of course, uh, there'll be part two coming up. So the next time, whenever we have this uh, uh, um, polling, right? If you really think that uh, the polling result is something that you don't mind particip you don't mind participating and want to be, you know, giving us your spot, right? Do watch out for those polling result, uh, polling questions. Okay, all right. For those who enjoy, I'm sure that you guys now wish that you guys can go back to the future or the past to actually buy more Bitcoin. All right. Now, <laughs> thank you guys for last night. Okay, we'll see. I'll see you again in the uh, another time. All right. Now, Dr. Fauci basically came in and says that right. COVID surge in Europe as a warning against lifting U.S. restriction right now. So apparently, apparently, right, U.S. really seem to want to, you know, lift up their restrictions. And uh, Dr. Fauci is saying that, right, look at Europe and you will know the problem. But again, does it matter? It doesn't really matter. So seriously, who cares now, really? Because if they care, they won't be bothered, right? Because look at it, what happened now in Europe, right? Several countries held, halted AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine because they formed blood clot. And because of that, it caused a lot of problem. Nine countries like Ireland, Denmark, Norland, Norway, sorry, Iceland have already suspended their vaccination. Okay, this is something that I want to remind the whole world is that why? I thought that everybody knows they have the same thing in a way, but why this is happening around the world. So all I can tell you is this, there's some problem with this vaccination. Of course, I know that some of my friends around me have already went for it itself. I just hope everything goes well. All right, if nothing goes well, nothing, nothing goes wrong for you, that's good. That means that you basically your body will accept it. But if after the vaccination, if you have some problem, please quickly seek medical help. All right, you don't want to get yourself into trouble. So all I can say is this, it seems to be the right. Joe Biden is also looking to set a goal for an American to be gathering in small group to celebrate 4th of July, which is about a few months' time. It seems that like he's quite confident. But whether is it realistic or not, right? I give my doubt. But I want to say one thing very important. If the technology shares are coming down because of the 10-year yields, and because the 10-year yields, in a way, the cyclical stock is going up, then because the reopening of the economy, right? So the question is this, if let's say there's another wave of attack, let's say there is, then of course the thing will go back to closing again of the economy, right? Then what will happen to the stocks? So now you're asking me now, now these people, the Americans received a $1,400 check and they were just about to jump into the stock market itself. Now, if they buy the tech shares, then what happened? If the 10 year go higher, they will get hit. If they go into cyclical stock itself, right? Most of them are that high now, right? And if there's another wave of attack, then what will happen to these stocks? So to me, it's all right. It's a blatant TRAP. It's a blatant trap at the moment right now. So all I can say is this, you just have to be very, very careful on this. This is something really not good itself, okay? All right, yes, indeed, Chongming, the Go has such a bit recently, all right? Go has such a bit recently. So all I can, all I can keep on reminding traders is that just uh, 
take note of that, okay? There is a lot of things that's not going in line in certain areas. So traders, you need to be very, very careful. Okay, so let's look at the Dow Jones, shall we? The Dow Jones now. Okay, Hang Seng has opened. <clears throat> Sorry, let me bring you Hang Seng right now. Okay, Hang Seng has uh, gap up. Hang Seng has gap up. Okay, Hang Seng has gap. Sorry. <laughs> okay, Hang Seng has gap up this morning. Okay, gap up this morning by about 150 points. Okay, Hang Seng now. Uh, but today, the Hang Seng opening price is uh, 28,868, but the pivot two is 29,126. So if Hang Seng stays above OP, Hang Seng may try to go higher, but because the KSI is red in color and it gap up, right? If Hang Seng goes below OP, there will be some selling again. So if you ask me on my personal level here as well, right? I believe that Hang Seng today will be more going towards the downside again. I repeat, I repeat myself one more time. I believe that the Hang Seng will be going more towards the downside. Now, why do I say that? Because the day before on Friday, we saw a very big engulfing candle. And of course, uh, this is also CCYR. So if the market goes below OP, the CCYR on the day chart should kick in and that will bring some selling pressure in the market. But undeniable, if the market stays well OP, then you just have to wait for a while first. For those people who want to jump in to buy, if you want to buy, you can do that when there's any CCRY on a five minute chart. But do take profit when you go to KTR plus one to plus three, okay? That is something that I want you to remind yourself. Now, end of the day for trading, right? Always try to play when uh, trade towards the market. All right, if the market is called for buy, you look for buying signal, right? If the market is over a sell signal, then why don't you consider it for you to go higher to short the market or follow through the momentum when it comes down? So there's something that you can consider, lah. okay? So where will the Hang Seng will be uh, going if I say coming down, right? So obviously the, the level that I'm watching out, maybe let me take a look here. Probably is this guy here. Let me see, the closing is for, 20 opening price 28686 okay so maybe around here maybe la okay now if the hang seng do come down maybe you go down to this point but at the moment now hang seng is trading above op because the dow is still up above op so that is probably the reason why the market is still going higher okay All right, so that is the Dow Jones for last Friday. The Dow Jones kept creeping higher. It went up initially about 100 points, stayed flat for almost two to three hours. Then to the last part of the day, it surges up itself as usual. Again, it's a typical Friday thingy. Last Friday, every almost every Friday, the last hour, there's always some movement. And obviously, usually the movement is towards the upside and it really happened. So let's just recap what happened on Friday. Uh, the Dow Jones climbed by 290 points. Uh, it's a new record high again, so, but it's, but at the same time, the yields hit, uh, the yields kept going higher. Uh, of course, the Nasdaq got a bit hit. So we saw the financial share like Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan up by 2% to 1.2%. Boeing and Capital, uh, Capital, uh, Caterpillar went up by a lot, 6.4%, 6.8% to 4.2%. So you can see that Boeing and Caterpillar, these two are very heavy weightage in terms of the Dow Jones. So when they are being pushed up itself relatively, it's basically like that now. So what I'm gonna remind you guys is this. If you remember just about six months ago when technology share like Apple, Facebook, Netflix, and uh, Amazon, Alphabet, they are going up and stuff, right? I was talking the same thing. I told you guys, there'll be a point whereby when the thing get overstretched, the market will pull back. And when the pullback come in and stuff, right, they'll give you a bit of excuses. And really now it's happening because you can see that Alphabet, Facebook, all lost, okay? Well, Apple, Amazon, Microsoft also closed in a rate. So there is now the uh, decoupling in a way. And of course, now the cyclical counters are now doing the same thing that what the technology shares were doing. But the problem is this, is I will say this again, the technology share can go keep on higher because of their business model. It is really in, it can be, it's exponential. It can go anywhere and everywhere. But come to cyclical itself, right? There's a point of, you know, you will point, you can come to a point that that's how much you can go. 
And if the economy itself is not opening up yet, but the people are buying in advance, in, in, in anticipation, right? That means that everybody's buying on hope now. It's the same thing that what happened back for the technology shares. And if the hope got hit, then obviously the thing will get very, very disaster. Risk. All right. So traders just be very careful. All right. So this is my personal view. But of course, now the Dow futures is trading much, much higher because everybody believes that, right, the economy is reopening and then more people getting into the stock market. And that's why it's time to buy. And incre incredibly, I saw this the first time I see this. Dow Jones will rise by 7.6% more thanks to mostly to eight stocks on some blue chip counter. So they're trying to say that, right, there'll be more upside. So now the market really has this whereby even the analysts now are all coming forward and calling for buy now and giving a very high number. So that is whereby I always want to be with this. When everyone is on the one side of the track ready, you just have to walk to the other side. That's all. This is number warning that I want to repeat myself again. Remember, when everybody is on one side of the cam and if the market is not moving accordingly, then walk to the other side. Now, if the market is still moving accordingly, then I might stay the same cam, right? But the market, if it's, it's so many people expect the market to go higher, but if the market doesn't, always walk to the other side, okay? That's something that I need to remind you many times. Now, this morning, I have a bit of technical issue, so I couldn't get you the Dow day chart, but I can show you the Dow intraday chart as a recap, okay? Now, the intraday chart itself, the Dow have been pretty sideways. Then after that, you can see that it start to pick up pieces from here. Okay, there is a BNB. Can you see that? Now, I realize that I can tell you this many, many times. Whenever I see a BNB followed by a color change from the bottom, actually KTR minus one to minus three, it's always a good deal to look for buy. All right, I've been seeing this many times and I'm, I'm also sure that you also seen it before. All right, and of course, once the market crosses the pivot one, I will tell you many times, this is pivot one. I don't know why you fly up. Okay. When the market cross pivot one and is above OP, of course, it's a buy, right? Above, above pivot one, above OP, it's always a CCRY, it's always a buy. So on Friday, when the market cross above pivot, it was a buy. And indeed, that's how the Dow Jones went all the way up again. So you really have to trust the system. The only thing is this, when you're buying here itself, right? People ask you, huh? you're buying at a day high, you know, you know that? Yes, I know that buying a day high is always very scary, but I can tell you this, if you're buying day high, it's based on above OP, above pivot one, the chance of you winning can be as high as 90%. That's why I keep on reminding traders that when the market's above OP and a pivot one, don't worry about the buying at high, the market will pay dividend for you. So that's the reason why traders, you have to remember this. I know that I've been speaking, saying this like a broken recorder, but the fact is still there. Okay, so that is the Dow Jones. Let's just look at the real market right now, the, the current live market. Okay, the Hang Seng just now went up right to 828,946. Now the Hang Seng has pulled back to the opening price level. So let's go through the motion and go through the TA of today. Now this is the Dow Jones and I won't change my chart as I told you before. There's nothing to change because the last time when this happened itself, I know that the market will keep on surging higher and higher. There's no changes in this. And of course, the only point that the market basically get a warning is when it goes below the MA30 and it broke my so-called my parallel trend line. So now at the moment, now I haven't drawn my parallel trend line yet because I wanted to just give the market a bit more room to go up. But more important thing itself, you can see that uh, the MA is still surging higher. So for today, the MA30 is at 31,760. So it's still very far away. So end of day, there's no real concern for the bullish traders. But I will just remind you that right at the moment now, because Everything is that the funds are still coming in, it's pouring in. So the market will keep on be, you know, get receiving the money. La. But once uh, the market stop itself, you know, like you basically throw a ball, right? From a potential energy level, you throw all the way to kinetic energy and as the price goes, as the ball go higher, there will be a point whereby it will come to saturation, whereby it cannot go any higher. The law of gravity will come in and then that's where things happen. All right, so at the moment now, to me, every day, I just look at the Dow opening price. If the market stays above OP, that's it. The market is going to go up. If the market stays below OP or hang around OP, that is where the warning bell will go. So at the moment now, that is what I will see from the Dow Jones. All right, long-term chart itself, my thing is still there. My, 31st, uh, my 30th of April target is still there. So we're coming to the midpoint of March already. Today is the 15th of March, right? So the midpoint, 
that is the point whereby I did mention to you to be very careful. And I'm not too sure will this be the start of anything, but you just take note, okay? Then of course, this is a longer tube chart. Everything looks good, so no need to mention. Weekly chart still surging, drawing up itself. So again, I will not mention anything. All right, so let's look at the Dow now. Oh, the, the Hang Seng is trading a bit lower now, below OP. So I think you know what to do, lah, traders. All right, I don't want to go through this. You know what to do. Okay, so let's look at the Dow Jones this morning. Now, the Dow Jones today, opening price is between the two pivots. Um, opening price is here, and the KSI is red. Now, again, I get people asking me, Kel, how come the Dow is up by almost 300 points the last three days and your KSI can be red? Is it because your indicators spoil? I will not want to say this again and again and again. All I can tell you is this, my friends, if the market stay above OP, do I expect the Dow to go up towards 30, 33,000 today? But if the market stays below OP, be very careful. There's a good chance that the Dow may pull back to 32,725. Now, obviously today the opening price is nearer to pivot two. I repeat, today's opening price is nearer to pivot two. So if the Dow Jones do pull back, if the Dow Jones do pull back below OP, I'm going to say that, right, to hit 32,725, it's going to be very easy. So you heard me loud and clear. Okay, that is my point here. Okay, so that is the um, US Dow Jones. For the NASDAQ, I already say that um, you had to be very careful and incredibly, you see the MLP here itself. This is MLP of the day before the market got supported and rebounded. So I'm going to put one more right here. Okay. So the NASDAQ now is actually tracking at the MLP level. So if the NASDAQ failed to stay above the MLP level of the Friday's market, then I do expect some profit taking. And if the, Dow, if the NASDAQ goes below 12,921, then that might be more strong selling. For the MA itself, right, you can see very beautiful. This is something that you must, must, must take notice, okay? Dear all, this is so, so important. Take a look. Now, the last two days, the market touches the MA30 for the um, NASDAQ and instantly there were reaction. Can you see that? This is the first reaction. This is the second reaction. So obviously, there will be a third reaction today. But if the market doesn't, doesn't really stay or hang above the MA30, and if it breaks down, then of course, that means the last two uh, touch of the MA to really tell you and symbolize to you that there might be some profit taking coming up. Now the MA200, the MA200 is somewhere around here. Then that is about 12,422 for today. Now, if you look carefully at the bottom of the screen, you can see that last few times when the market hit the MA200, except for one occasion where you purposely closed below and instantly the next day the market reacted by buying. So this tells you straight away that the MA200 is a very strong indicator here. So if I get it correct example, then I will say that if, the, if there is any profit taking coming on for the NASDAQ, once it comes down, the MA200 will be a very important level to watch out for. Because every time when it goes there, the market rebounds. So for short sellers, you should consider buying back during that period of time. Okay, so this is very important figures for all of you for today. Watch out for the NASDAQ. Okay, so at the moment now, NASDAQ is trading at a day high. So it looks good at the moment. So let's see what will happen later on. Okay. All right, for gold, right? Gold again has strongly rebounded after it tried to test below the 1700, but I told you as long as the 1689 support level is there, gold will still stay strong. And of course, we saw gold basically climbing up all the way to above 1720 again. So now the thing is this, as usual, the analysts now are all saying that the gold is over the cliff, it's dangerous, it's no, it's no time to buy gold. And they even started telling you that, right, the, the weakness in the in the dollar. Well, I don't think the dollar will be weak. As a matter of fact, like I say after the 1.9 trillion thing is out already in the market, right? And if the dollar starts to creep up, right, this will be a very detrimenting problem for gold. So traders be very, very careful on that. Okay, so again, I have day chart problem this morning. So I just going to show you the intraday chart. Now go on Friday, it tried to go up first, but it failed. It basically did a CCYR on gold here. Okay, now if obviously if you look carefully, this is a BMB. This is the color change. So it was a trigger point, and of course, go went out. Then after that, if you miss the first one, the second one was very clear, very ident very clearly spelled that there's a BMB right here. 
a BMB, followed by a color change, and immediately the gold reacted by selling off. It was only at the later part itself, right? Okay, if you look carefully, again, you saw it, right, my friends, just like how the Dow did. This is a BMB in the gold, and then followed by a color change that triggered the KTR minus three level, and that was where gold propelled itself all the way to opening price. So you notice that if you see BNB in anywhere in your chart, right, it's all the way a very telltale signal to tell you that what you should do as a trader and not miss it. So BNB is very, very powerful. When you see them, actually, please take some concern on this and watch out for a potential good trade. Okay, it could be a turnaround trade, and usually it is. Okay. Got it? So let's look at the gold market right now. Let me bring you gold. Now, this is gold market on the with MA first. Okay, so basically, um, this morning, uh, MLP for gold is about 1725, and gold purposely touches 1725 and rebounded. So the MA2, MA30 now is 1748. We are about $16 away. Uh, we'll go touch the 1748 level. Now, let's say you ask me this question, right? Let me, uh, let me say this. If history can give you a very good, uh, fair assessment on this, then you can see that every time when gold goes up, right, it will try to go towards the MA30. The last time it misses, and that was where the gold collapsed. So the question is this, will this be a touch or will this be a miss? So I'm going to say up front here, all of you, that if gold is to go up, all right, if it touches it, you may see some resistance before coming down. That is the first thing that may happen. The worst will happen is that if it doesn't even go up near to it and then, uh, sorry, miss the MA30 by a little bit and have to go down, right? Then the selling will be drastic. So if you ask me, my personal take will be, it will be the second one, meaning B. I believe B will be more likely will happen, right? I don't think that the gold market have to strength to go any higher. Now, why do I say that? If you look carefully on the RSI, this is where the common base is, and we are near the common base already. I repeat, we are near the common base. So if you're near the common base, that means that, right, if the goals go any higher, a bit more will be possible, but it will not be too far unless it's a dramatic change of trend which I don't think so. Like, because fundamentally, as I said again, when the 10-year yields are going up, the dollar will follow up soon. And once the dollar follow up, right, obviously when the dollar goes higher, gold will go lower. And that is something that you don't want to see. And I also tell you guys, if that happened, shall the equity market also come off because of the 10-year yields going higher, then naturally gold will also follow the Dow Jones or for the equity market. So that's why personally, I'm not that bullish in gold. That's the reason why I've been saying more to sell. But of course, I keep on saying this, gold will not come down in a straight line. It will rebound as usual. And once it rebound, any time when it rebound, it's always a good time to look out for potential sell signal. So traders, you already heard me, I already tell you. Now, usually when gold rebound, it's about four days to five days before it hit a peak, right? So by this time now, the market is also on the fifth day already. So that means that logically by right of patterns today or tomorrow could be a very important point for gold. So traders, please be on standby. You don't want to be caught on the wrong side, okay? So you can see here is for four days. The fifth day, the selling came in. One, two, three, four, five. This is five days. That's one, two, three, four, four days. This is one, two, three, one, two, three, four. All right, so you see that, right? All along have been like that. So it's not one, two, three, four. So today is a fifth day, all right? Traders, unique, right? This is why you are here for morning MAO. And that's why I want you guys to focus on the market today. But of course, today got this uh this week like we got this FOMC meeting, so no nah, roller coaster right? It's expected, huh? All right, the gold weekly chart. As long as it stays above the one six eighty nine level, there's nothing much to concern. For those who bought at one six eighty nine, you want to take some profit, but you don't need to run out of it at the moment. Now it's still okay. Now for those who want to short sell gold, it's all right unless you sell on a high level down or if not it's all right you have to wait for it to really goes back below the 1700 level and test the 1689 the 1689 support level is really incredible right you see very powerful level a level that i mentioned and it really is stick to it so for people next time when you see this happening again you will know what to do but the level that i'm really watching for is the 1659 level that is the level that i think if i want to buy i'll be more comfortable to buy at 1659 level 
that is a level. But of course, if gold can go even crazier, it can go down to 1555. Well, I'll buy even more gold for myself to keep. So of course, that is my personal take. At the end of the day, um, if I look at it from the moment of RSI right now and look at the, my target board, most likely we will see something like this. Uh, then that will be a very lovely time to buy into gold. Okay, so this is a bit of forecast forwardation feel in the market, but at least I'm telling you what am I looking at and I'll also be very specific to you what do you think will be a better choice. Okay, so of course, end of the day, you make your own decision. Right? You will know what to do best for yourself. Okay, I'm not here to uh, do anything more than that. All right, I just saw some movement in the... Um, sorry. Oh, sorry. Over here. Hmm? Okay. Sorry. <laughs> All right. I just saw some selling in the Hang Seng. There is some selling in Hang Seng. Hang Seng has just created a BNB. Hang Seng has created a BNB. So if Hang Seng is created a BNB, and based on what I just said earlier, then Hang Seng, if it bridges the KTR minus one with a BNB right here, then Hang Seng will likely be trading towards this point. And that point is 28,683. The same level that I mentioned earlier itself, uh, 28,686, right? So at least uh, this is really live sharing right now, telling you uh, my personal take in the market. Okay. All right. So Hang Seng traders, uh, you have about another two, three minutes uh, to look into how you want know, to trade your Hang Seng. Okay. All right, uh, I started to receive messages coming in again as usual. Uh, no worry, guys. You trade your thing. You Oh, Hang Seng is coming down already. Hang Seng is coming down. Uh, so traders, if you are looking to take some profit, as I mentioned to you, look out for those levels that I just mentioned to you. Lah. Okay, all right. So this is my personal take on the Hang Seng right now. Okay, live to target at the level that are there. Okay, so traders, this is uh, how we do this thing here. Okay, all right, Hang Seng treats for you live right now. Okay, um, sorry to, to run away from there. Let's look at back to gold market. Okay, for gold market, right? For gold market, huh? Okay, so for gold today, uh, be, it's still below the MA. Uh, 30 so that is where the goal is weekly chart wise i told you for the uh, the 60 61.8 level so let's look at today's goal in terms of the convention our own chart now for today sorry but for today's goal do note now uh, today's goal today's goal is above op and above pivot one. It's above OP and above pivot one. So which means that today for gold itself, right, it's more towards the buy side, okay? It's above OP and it's above pivot one, right? As you know. So that's why today, if you look at gold, if you follow the system, it's above OP and above pivot one, not for the buy. So I'm not half surprised gold will be going to test 1738 if let's say the dollar stay weak, okay? 1738. All right, that was where the gold will be going. Now, do know the KSI on gold, the KSI is red in color, so gold has to stay above OP. But if you go stay above OP, even when I use the uh, the circuit breaker level as a support, 1717 is a very crucial support level there. 1717 is a very crucial support level there. And you can see that the last few occasion, the market has stabilized at above 1717 level. All right. The blue bar is still there, it's retreating a little bit upwards. So that means that, right, the, the bearishness is not as strong. But I would rather remind everybody is you have to follow rules. So for trading, for trading side, right, you have to follow the rules of engagement. Make sure that you are buying above OP and CCRY must be there. Okay, CCRY has to be there. If not, it's all right. You don't get yourself into trouble and make the mistake. So let's look at the 15 minute chart right now for gold. So gold this morning, you can see very clearly for gold. All right, gold has started to stay above OP. It's at, it has a uh, zebra and a big movement here. Is it a BNB by chance? Let me take a look. Low 
Okay, this is a BMB. The big yellow bar is a BMB. So it's a color change, CCRY, touch OP, BMB. So that means that if let's say later on, shall go has any upside, it may even test all the way to the KTR2, then that's 1731. But because the KSI is red, I remind you, then of course there will be resistance at KTR plus one, which you can see very clearly is happening right now. There's some pullback down there. So that's why traders, you really need to actually have the uh, knowledge on the KTR with the KSI to give yourself a bit, a little bit more competitive edge to know why the market will stop at KTR plus one. That is what is happening right now. Okay, so that's the reason why for that. Okay, all right. So that is the gold direction. Of course, some to silver. All right, silver, beautiful. Look at silver. Last Friday, I told you silver. There's a support level at twenty five dollars and thirty eight cents. And the MA30 and really silver really touches it and rebounded strongly, right? Beautiful. The MA30 is MA200 is absolutely incredible, right? So now the MA30 is drawing nearer. So again, it's the same thing now. We're going to expect some bigger movement coming soon. But the MA200 is a very strong support for silver. So like I always say this, if it's a strong support, it has to stay strong. Anytime if the silver prices goes down, the silver selling could be very drastic. But if silver can break above the MA30, that's what we've all seen before, then of course, fine. Now we are seeing some selling now on gold price coming off $3 on the high, as we are still saying. And also the Hang Seng has dropped to 28,700. It's pretty near to my target level. So I will say this once again for traders, be very careful. The whole world expect the market to be higher today because of the COVID-19 uh, relief bill. But apparently it's all right. The market has another direction. So that's why I always say this, follow the, follow the market is the most accurate. Okay, most, most accurate. Oops, sorry. Okay, so that is the analysis on gold. Let's do a quick one on Bitcoin. Wow, yesterday Bitcoin was really, really busy day. I need to change the, the wording first of all. It's not 11 of March, just give me a short moment. It's actually the 14 of March is yesterday's market moment. Huh? All right, 14 of March, Sunday, yesterday, right? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven trades just in the second half of the day. Now, second of the day is that it means that after 12 noon to 12 midnight. Lah. So what happened is that you can see that it was seven trades and one lost money. The other six of them all made money. Now, single tick make, that means make about 300. Double tick means about 500. And triple tick is about 800 and more. So you can see that it's the same strategy as long as you see KCX at the bottom blink to green, look for color change. When a color change from red to yellow, you just buy. I can tell you this, this is one of the best system ever in the market. You just have to follow through. Remember that you do not buy, you don't try to sell the market because for Bitcoin to short sell is quite dangerous. And also to buy will be a better choice, right? But of course, those who have went through my last night, it is a BTC MAO. I did tell you two specific months to take care of the Bitcoin trading. If you remember that, that'd be good for you, okay? All right. So let's look at Bitcoin, shall we? Wow, Hang Seng has hit my level perfectly. Oh my God, look at it. That is the level that I mentioned. I mentioned that the Dow Hang Seng will come down to 28,683 28, and the Hang Seng really, really come down, touched that point incredibly and rebounded. Oh my God, this is really fascinating, right? Amazing, really amazing. How on earth the system knows this particular level? Gosh, incredible, right guys? Really incredible. I, I really am I'm very amazed by this. Okay, so let's look at the uh, Bitcoin right now. Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. Now for Bitcoin today, the opening price is between the pivot one and uh, pivot two level. And um, this, uh, uh, the, as long as the market stays above OP, Bitcoin still have a chance to go higher. Now Bitcoin is really on its own and a lot of demand in the market. So as long as Bitcoin stays up, it can go to touch 61,946, creating a new all-time high. But if Bitcoin stays below OP, there's a chance of it coming down to 58,000. But with the KSI that is green in color and no blue bars at the bottom, I really don't think Bitcoin will be coming down much in the near future. I mean, for Bitcoin now at 60,000, 1% move, 
is basically uh six one percent right what sixty thousand ma so ten percent is six thousand one percent is six hundred so one percent movement up down is very normal for bitcoin very very normal the day to day fluctuation can be as much as three percent up or three percent down so that is why I say this for traders who want to make money from bitcoin it's going to be relatively easy as long as you follow the rules of engagement okay all right so that is bitcoin for us all right, so I have finished the first part of MAO, which is the TA site for today. All right, um, okay, I'll give you Dex just a bit more to go. Sorry, Dex. Yeah, Dex is still trying, it's all trying to go up. Now, if you look at the trend line that I draw, uh, I draw it from way, way long time ago. You see that way, way long ago. It's been 2017 chart. I extended to all the way to recently. And incredibly, you see Dex actually hitting the resistance level perfectly and then coming off. But the way the market reacted on Friday seems that DEX will try to test again the blue line. I believe you'll test the blue line again. Okay. Uh, that's about uh, 14,601 level. 14,601. I write it down for you. La. So if the market really go according to plan, then the, there is a possibility that the market will be... Oh, wait a minute. Let's confirm. Huh? Six one zero six zero eight, correct. Okay, so if the there's any form of resistance for today for DAX will be fourteen thousand six hundred and eight as a form of resistance for today for the DAX market. Okay, so I'm gonna fin I finished my this uh, first part of the morning MAO. I'm gonna go into something more alternate views. So some people may not like it. So if you think that you don't want to hear the second part, you can now take your leave. All right, I wish you all the best for today's market. All right, we we'll give a quick 10 second break for those who need to leave. Okay, right, if you're still around, let me continue now. Now, Steve Henrich this morning, wow, he went into a very blasting mode, all right? But his blast this time around makes a lot of sense if you like, uh, if you're already a person being objective here in terms of fundamentals, right? Then you may understand why he's so unhappy. Now, we all know that in 2019, the Federal Reserve cut the rate three times, right? When the unemployment was at the low end. I mean, that was correct. They cut the rate at a good time and the economy was not in recession. So it makes sense. Because at time itself, everything is okay. But of course, the moment they, 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 really, they really did it was because the time the stock market dropped by 20% since quarter four. And that is the reason why things happen, right? So that means the interest rate has a bit, they, they really have a bit of relationship in between us for sure. So now this time round, he's saying that, right, on this time round, okay, there is, uh, there is more, uh, the interest rate is coming at the lower end and then they are talking about liquidity is having non-stop for the last three years. So the thing is this, if they say the interest rate to keep low for under 2014, that means there'll be six years of non-liquidity injection and this will be the biggest distortion in the financial market. Lah. And I obviously believe in that. So if this going keep on going, the consequences will be ridiculous. And of course we have to accept it because we are not all eating the same cake, right? So free market in his opinion has been dead for a long while, which indeed is really having dead. It's all manipulated. So end of the day is that as long as the market can, can do and hold a market, no problem. All right, but not uh, these people are the one to be the sacrificer uh, in the market. So that is where by this morning he started to blast. I can see his, his point of being upset, but as I said many times again, you can be upset in the financial market, but if the market is not going to sell, it's not going to sell. Is it? That's all. Just like when Apple, Tesla were all going up itself, he keep on reminding people that it's way overvalued, but it was wrong for many, many months until the market has come to the point of that's it. The boys have unloaded to the retailers and the retailers are holding the babies. Then the market come off, right? So it's always like this. So as I said, because I told you, I promise you I'm not going to do any more financial indicators, but since he put it up again, I just want to show to you that he repeated him, repeated here, telling you about the GDP and the bill share and the, the total asset of, of the Federal Reserve versus the TMC versus the GND. So you can see that all 
is showing that the market at the moment now is way, way, way above valuation, above reality, above average. So it's just a matter of time when things happen. But until then, there's no reason to be panicking. All right. So last but not least, this is something that's very crucial. That is whereby I share this with you and someone actually also talk about this now, Lee's end. So he's, she's saying that right now, you can see that the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ ratio, seemingly the last time when this happened was back in 1999 during the dot-com crisis. And of course, when they hit that point, the market pulls back significantly. So now what we're seeing is that previously it was at about 3.5 now and now it's pulling up because the NASDAQ is surging, it's going lower, SMP is going higher. So obviously the, the thing is had to change and that's why traders are getting worried because will this be a repertoire of what happened in, back in 1999? And to wrap it up for today, remember this is uh, David Tapper back then in January 2021, he tell people that, hey, be careful, right? In 1999, the market did not do as well on the dot com back is back in 19 and January. But of course, March now he have technically tell you that hey, actually buying stocks is okay. So you can see the type of game these boys are playing. So they no one really asked him about what, what he said in January, but now people just remind remember that he said this said this before. So it's a bit confusing if you want to follow this guy. So end of the day is this you do your part, watch the market accordingly, trade that trade according to the system, I think that will be best for you. All right, guys. So that will be the end of today's market. Do understand this. Uh, that remember, as I keep on reminding you guys, is that this week is FOMC week. So consider to go slower. Don't need to rush into the market. And of course, uh, if you can, make sure that you do your analysis properly and trade according and trade to strength on the market. If the market says sell, you just follow on the sell side. If the market is buy, then buy at the buy side, okay? So guys, remember that you just need to remember this. Okay, today, rule engagement is really simple. Congratulations to those who actually made money enhancing my live trade. Right, all the best. Take care. Bye-bye.